morning, everybody. This is Common Sense True Crime. Holly, happy Monday. I hope you have a great day today and had a good weekend, too. So with the news that we got last night about cracking cases, it brought back a question I had a few months ago. It was, the question is, how did things go so wrong for Cam and Allie? When they first started their channel in August of 2021, I thought they seemed like a decent young couple. I did not see signs of them being on any substances. I could be wrong. Maybe there was stuff going on then that that I didn't pick up on, but I certainly didn't see it or or think it about them. So I went back to their first live and what they said during that live stuck out to me. So let me play that clip. Uh, moving everybody around to where they need to be. And, you know, I'm not going to go any further into that. Just we have family life too. But um, so we're there late. It's about 11 o'clock, 1130 my time. So uh, we're sitting there and we're just talking and there's nobody in this parking lot and a van pulls up beside us with the windows down and a guy pops his head out smoking a cigarette and starts talking to Allie and what's he say to you this is because I was over on the well, passenger side I don't think he saw I heard it too there. yeah yeah and yeah Benny it was on FaceTime with me and when he pulled up he I think he had to have been either drinking or he was on some sort of substance. substance yes and so he pulls up and he was mumbling and you couldn't really understand what he was saying but he said something about i was looking for a maroon van and then we were like okay and i said well i haven't seen anything like that and he goes well did you say you're from pikeville and we were like no we never said where we were from and then the next thing we know he's talking about how he likes to party and he I said, like to do about everything. He yeah. said, I like to do about everything. He said, we can go on down to Beach Creek. And Allison stuck her head, I mean, shot her head out the window. I went out that window, and I was like, did you say Get Beach on in the Creek? And, uh, you know, I've stated before in our videos, I, I'm not one to believe in coincidence. I'm sitting there, you, know, you know, I don't know. I don't want to go that far yet, but I'm just wanting to tell you what happened. Uh, and Benny, you heard every bit of it because you started dealing. He said, "He said, uh, did, did he just say Beach Creek?" And I said, "Yeah, he did." And you know, I just feel like maybe that yeah, uh, with everything that's been going on through this, tripping. yeah, you were chirping I'm, out, man. And like, I did was somebody too. just pull up to you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know, we were, you know, I didn't know how to handle it, and I, so I told Alice, I said, "Just pull off." pull off right now we go down to the mcdonald's parking lot go around the mcdonald's park facing this priceless parking lot and we watch this van uh circle five times around the parking lot and then he goes to where he points his headlights straight at us he turns his headlights off i see his door open close and he starts flashing his lights at us and i'm like what is going on you know i didn't understand you know it's suspect i mean if you if you know, I don't know where to where to go with that. I'm sitting there and I'm just lost. I'm like, what are the chances that we come in to Kingsport, go over into the Hawkins County, because half of Kingsport is Sullivan County, half is is Hawkins County, or City of Kingsport, Hawkins County. We, we and we passed over, and I, I said, go ahead and pull up your uh, navigation and see how far we are from Beach Creek. Well, were we ten? We were not far. We were right at the where you turn to go down it we were what five miles from where the turnoff was to go down yeah like something like that five miles to turn and that's you know that's the first part of everything we want to talk about here um when i was talking about that we uh that well, we, we just, want to go ahead we, we didn't know what to think of that that was just odd and we don't know if it has any kind of re relevance to summer or anything, but it was just odd that that would happen as soon as we got down there. And it just threw us for a loop to say the least. Yeah. Hold on a second. And I want to address the sniffles. We all 
Okay, so a couple observations here. Um, if this ha happened, and it sounds like it did to me, I don't have any reason not to believe them, then they should have run at that point, not continued to talk to somebody who was immediately circling them and wanting them to get high with him. Who was this guy? And why didn't they run away at that point to protect their sobriety? Especially Cam. I'm not sure that Allie had a problem before. But that would have been the time to say, you know, this isn't a good place. Something evil is here. And we need to go home to our kids. Another thing I noticed is this is their first live. And they're, they have Benny on their first live. Where did they meet him? How did they know him so early into them being into Summer's case? I feel like they knew each other before. You guys can tell me what you think. But he was just Johnny on the spot as soon as they got started. Um, and, you know, it, it just... The bottom line with them, I'll just finish by saying this. You know, people call me a hater of them and things like that. My first my first experience talking to Kim through email was to say, you know, I'm a former addict. I'm seeing what's going on. And then I just kind of told him my testimony of, you know, I didn't think my kids knew. Um, I thought I was doing okay. And, you know, it, it just about ruined my life. And I didn't want to see that happen to them. They have two small children. And I knew that they had some level of faith in God. And so I reached out in that way. And of course, it's deny, deny, deny. You know, just hating me for, even though I was trying to be kind, hating me for noticing the drug use. So, um... But really, I, I just wanted to reach out and say, you know, this is sad. It's very triggering to those of us who have, you know, been on drugs, been addicted to, to drugs, uh, to see you high and, you know, praying to God and say, you know, telling everybody that you are 100% clean when you're not and lying to us. It's just, it was upsetting. And, but I, I think I'll leave it at this. Really, the most common sense thing to, the most, the frame to put this in that makes the most sense is number one, they do not belong in a true crime community that is about missing children when they have now two charges each of felony child abuse. And so they don't need to be in our community anymore. Whether they get help or not is up to them. I pray for their children. Their children didn't ask for any of this. But they don't need to be supported on here anymore. Um, I'm with Trevor on that. It's, it's, it doesn't make any sense to allow them to continue to succeed on here whenever they have child abuse charges. And the second thing is, People are saying this is a wake-up call for them. It's not a wake-up call for them. And the reason why is because it is more of the same. It is lying, not taking accountability for, for what they have done and the situation that they're in, and blaming, blaming, blaming everybody else, um, in particular Cam's mom now. So, you know, when they decide to surrender, say we need help, and, you know, we created the mess we're in, nobody else, then yeah, it could be a wake-up call and there's hope. But right now, they're not doing that. They are so deep in denial and deep into, you know, not taking responsibility for their mistakes and their shortcomings. I just can't see this ending well. But I do pray for their children. So that's just my 10 cents. I hope you guys have a great day today. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.